that way of life is um, experiencing yourself in nature, making connections with others, with history, with the world around you, with our planet, and with yourself. Uh, and I think the biggest change is it's I'm this planet is important to me, and it it has continued to help me elevate that for other people. Healthiest City on Mike King Biz Radio Network. Welcome to America's Healthiest City on ESPN Richmond 106.1, part of the Mike King Biz Media Network. If you are new to this program, this is a 10-year community partnership to make Richmond, the entire region, the healthiest in America by 2033. Uh, we do that through americashealthiestcity.com, where you can check out our ideas board, you can submit your ideas, you can comment on ideas that others have submitted. And if you represent a nonprofit, a business, a government institution, or an academic institution, and you want to contribute to this cause, being an ambassador is free. We'll help tell your story, and we can all move the needle if we do this together. So uh, today on our program, I have Ann Porch, the founder and owner of Basket and Bike, a wonderful organization here in Richmond that gets people outside and, uh, and, and keeps them active, but also allows them to, to soak in all the wonderful beauty that our city and beyond has. So Anne, uh, welcome to our program. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you, Will. I'm really glad to be here. Appreciate you inviting me. Yeah. So um, I know that you're not uh, a native of Richmond. So uh, we start there. Tell us um, tell us a little bit about your your uh, origin and what, what brought you to Richmond. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, I've been here about 32 years, so it feels like a long time. But I'm originally from a small town in North Carolina called Sanford. Uh, it's about 40 minutes south of Raleigh. I went to Wake Forest University and after college, I uh, was a politics major, didn't know what I wanted to do, ended up going abroad and I worked as a nanny for the Picasso family for a year um, in Paris, took classes at the Sorbonne, moved back to North Carolina. Where were all my friends? Um, many people at Wake went to Charlotte or Atlanta, New York, and two of my best friends had moved to Richmond and I came to visit them one weekend and I fell in love. They were hanging out on the front porch of their um, fan house that they were renting, and they took me to Bottoms Up Pizza my first night in Richmond. <laughs> well, that'll hook anybody. I, I guess so. <laughs> I think it must have. But, yeah, I just love the vibe. There were, um, I think I really, having been in Europe, all the walkable sidewalks, the corner cafes that Richmond had in the fan district really spoke to me. So, um I will share with you that I actually grew up in North Carolina as well, about an hour north of Charlotte on 85, so about an hour uh, west of you. Um, fond of it, um, but happy to be here in Richmond as well. So um, It's always fun to talk to folks. You know, you do your research, you know somebody who's studied in Paris, but you don't know that they worked for the Picasso family. Yeah. It's like a pretty cool <laughs> thing. Um, that's not something that you get to do in Richmond. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's go forward a little bit. You, um, you're here in Richmond. You get into the financial advisory business or financial planning business? Um, actually, I think it was from, from the sales perspective. I um, But I did, my first job in Richmond was for Signet Bank. For those of you who remember Signet Bank, but Signet Bank Capital Markets, uh, I worked in the fixed income department, which basically translates into bonds. So mm -hmm. you've got stocks and bonds. I sold bonds to companies, corporations, municipalities, um, money managers. And I did that for about 20 years uh, through a few different mergers as Banks get gobbled up, as mm -hmm. you know how that works. But First Union took Signet. Um, they wanted to move me to Charlotte. Uh, ended up staying, working briefly for Deutsche Bank, Alex Brown. And then the bulk of my career was with Morgan Keegan, which is now Raymond James. Okay. And then I did, uh, I, I kind of left, wanting to do something more creative. Uh, ended up kind of having a panic attack. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, women only make up 15% of finance jobs. So I did go back as a financial advisor uh, for a couple years before um, I really found the calling to start Basket and Bike. Yeah. So this has been about eight years now that you've been doing Basket and Bike, right? It's hard to believe, yes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> is, uh, you know, what, what was it that sparked that um, very specific business that you decided to start. I mean, so entrepreneurship is, is uh, it's going out on a limb for sure. Yeah, I definitely think, and for those people out there who are interested in starting a business that sort of can give back, 
um, it definitely was layer upon layer upon layer of different experiences, different things that I enjoy in my life. Um, had been biking since 2007, just to the farmer's markets, the grocery store on a bike with a basket. Um, that was a love. But uh, really, while I was a financial advisor, we had a tour of the low line, uh, Capital Trees organization that gives back um, by really providing a waterfront refuge for people and plants along the last stretch of the Virginia Capitol Trail. I like bringing people together. I had done some event planning and um, the, of course, the Virginia Capitol Trail Foundation, uh, Virginia Capitol Trail had just opened, was beginning, was gonna open in 2015, which is when the wheels, no pun intended, started turning. Um, and my husband and I actually went out in July of 2015 we had not put our bikes on the back of our car in years. Threw them on the back, went out to Charles City, a part of you know the Virginia Capitol Trail, and did a 14-mile bike ride. We packed a snack for my basket, and when we got back, I was like, this was really fun. Told some friends about it, and they said, well, we don't know where to go. You should plan something. I'm like, well, would you pay me to do it? And they're like, sure. And so part of that, I was excited about that, but I also wanted to find a way to put people more in touch with nature. I just was really craving being outdoors more and giving back to the environment. So um, I had the opportunity to watch the video on your website and, um, and it was absolutely lovely. I, uh, my wife and I are big fans of Upper Shirley Vineyards and, um, and so I sent it to her and you know, anytime you get the heart emoji from your wife, you know <laughs> uh, what your plans are uh, coming up. So we're excited to come on a tour with you guys. Uh, one thing that I, I discovered in my research is that uh, you ride your bike just about everywhere. Um, and, and even sometimes with, with high heels on, is that accurate? That is accurate. I, um, uh, I, I find that the bicycle also does not mean, it is, it does not need to be just about athleticism. It is about a way of life. Um, and I think more and to have a healthy city, we need more and more access to that type of biking. You don't need to get suited up in a kit. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I think that's wonderful for if you're going out and just about the miles. But if you need to go to reduce a short car trip, keep from putting carbon into the air, you also get your endorphins going, whatever you're wearing. I mean, if you're wearing jeans, throw on a pair of tennis shoes or even flip flops. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if I'm wearing a dress, it's not going to stop me from getting on the bike and going where I need to go. This is America's Healthiest City on ESPN Richmond 106.1, part of the Mike King Biz Media Network. Today we have Ann Porch, the founder and owner of Basket and Bike, uh, a local tour business, uh, all, all on bikes, all on bikes, That's right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit, I want to talk about the business so that folks know, you know, what they're getting into, what they can get into. You guys do rentals, you do tours, do all kinds of stuff. So share a little bit about um, what, what people can experience sure. if they come to you. We, um, we offer, Will, um, a few different history and nature focused tours. We do it for, you can book a tour online. Primarily, we also do book groups who are looking to say team building mm -hmm. or a birthday party where we do a short stretch, be it six miles to 14 miles, let's say on the Capitol Trail or in the avenues of Richmond. So uh, that would involve, we provide the bike, the basket, the snack, uh, most of these provide a voucher for a beverage, like our tour out at Upper Shirley Vineyards includes a glass of wine at the vineyard afterwards or another beverage. Uh, we also provide rentals. Uh, you can call us uh, or book a rental online and we can have a bike waiting for you at Upper Shirley Vineyards at Four Mile Creek, which is a popular put-in destination for bikes, or downtown at Quirk Hotel. Okay. So... Uh, lots of different things that are integrated. And I think one of the things that I love about your business so much is that um, you're bringing together all the things that make Richmond uh, amazing. So I know that, um, you know, there's that local fair, um, you know, the wine, as you mentioned, the nature. Talk a little bit about the history. How does that work? How do you, how do you put together a history tour? And, and what are the things that people are interested in, in seeing in our city? Well, depending on where we are, and yet, depending not, I feel like the history can be a little bit the same. Um, you know, one of the things I reflect on the most is the fact that our landscape changes and has always been changing. And what I'm most fond of doing is weaving in the three cultures that came together along the banks of our beautiful James River 
which used to be called Yocanta or Powhatan River, um, because we know it wasn't always the river of King James, let's say. Um, but it is a place that three cultures, largely unknown one to the other, came together along the banks of that river to form a country that would quite frankly change the world. Uh, and, um, and sometimes it's a hard history to talk about, but it's an important history to talk about. There can also be joy and wonder in that story. So I try to give fair treatment. Um, and we also, people like to know who lived in Richmond, some of the different characters, and that's always fun to talk about. I try to weave, let's say, I may, we may not be as facts and figures, you know, dot on, but it's a storytelling. And we try to share stories that represent um, a lot of different parts of Richmond and its surrounding area uh, from thousands of years ago to today. So what is it that, um, you know, of all the different uh, tours that folks can take, what is it one thing that you hope people will take away? Or maybe two things or three mm -hmm. things. Press pause. Back when uh, one of our social media, you know, hashtags that I like using and uh, is press pause. I find that when you go for a bike ride, it's a bit meditative. Um, and I'm all, I am always amazed at the number of people that tell me how great that was. And I think there's just something about putting everything away, biking beside a friend, having a conversation, feeling the breeze in your hair. And I'm not kidding you, it's just the blue sky or there's something that speaks to every person that does this and I think could speak to more. Uh, an example of another way we can be healthy. So um, during the pandemic, I ended up doing some cross country trips and I'm convinced that there's something about being in motion that, that does something for the mind. And I haven't figured it out yet, but I think that being in motion does something for you. So maybe there's something to that. I agree very much. So you've, you know, we'll go back, you know, eight years now. It's definitely a different chapter for you, but I'm curious in retrospect, you know, what has been the most profound thing, the most profound shift in your life in, in this new, uh, new world of existence? Wow, that's a, quite a question. Um, I feel really good about what I'm doing. It's tiring physically sometimes work, but I feel that through it, basket and bike is sort of becoming a verb. A friend of mine said that to me early on, but it, it's becoming a verb and it is something that represents a way of life. And that way of life is um, experiencing yourself in nature, making connections with others, with history, with the world around you, with our planet, and with yourself. Uh, and I think the biggest change is it's I'm, this planet is important to me and it, it has continued to help me elevate that for other people. So let's talk a little bit about nature uh, mm -hmm. and being in nature. <clears throat> I've seen studies that, that say that just having plants inside, you know, in, in spaces that you spend time can be beneficial for your mental health. Um, what are some anecdotes that, that you can share around, um, you know, not just the pause and the peace, but, you know, are there tangible, you know, mental health benefits that you see as a result of, of doing this work and, and bringing people along for the journey? Um, well, I believe so. And, and one of the first things I noticed when I was riding the bike to, say, the grocery store, um, there are a couple things. I think we're so, we get so caught in our homes. We get outside, just stepping outside somehow mm -hmm opens up something. And then as you said, that movement, I don't know, at the end of that ride, I'll typically feel, even if it's only uh, one mile, you know, to the store and back, um, I feel more alive. And there's, you just feel more awake. Um, and more people would always smile at me when that always usually a smile can make you feel good. That's a tangible thing. And that we can, we can, I guess, disconnect from the things that are keeping us from our true selves. And somehow getting on that bike, uh, being surrounded by others or by yourself, because in that moment that you're moving, you are a little bit by yourself. Um, we can connect really well with ourselves. And I think that is tremendous. I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, community health. But before I do that, I want to just Transition back to Richmond a little bit, and and you know, folks that listen to this program, they could be new to Richmond. There's probably folks that have been here for a long time, 
Um, would you mind sharing maybe some gems in Richmond, some places that people should check out that you've become really fond of? Oh, of course. Um, well, um, the, the, one of my favorite spots, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts and the beautiful outdoor um, sculpture garden. Um, it's an easy place to get to. It's just, there's a, a great vibe there um, when you go. They offer outdoor yoga classes. Um, it's a really wonderful spot. I like um, any of the James River Park systems, any of the parks that allow you to get down to say Pony Pasture, look it up. You go for a nice walk along the James River, you can go for a run, um, you can get down on the rocks and get on the river, which is really great. Uh, the Potterfield Bridge, if you haven't seen that, is, is primo. And any of the restaurants where you can dine outdoors, I think are great. Um, uh, Stella's is one of my favorite restaurants mm -hmm. in town. Um, and I think they're pretty much everywhere in the city now, so yeah. you can find, find right next them. Next to one of my favorite breweries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just explore and don't be afraid. I would say don't be afraid to explore. Uh, and another favorite spot is down by the canal where we do lead some of our tours along the low line, Capitol Trees low line. Um, it's beautiful plants. And then, of course, Lewis Skinner. And I'll leave you that. Lewis Skinner Botanical Gardens. Well, a lot of stuff, I mean, all along those uh, routes are, are changing. A lot mm -hmm. of change happening yeah. uh, all along the river. So that's going to be exciting to see. It is. Very exciting. So let me uh, transition here. You're listening to America's Healthiest City on Mike King Biz Radio Network on ESPN Richmond 106.1 and Choice 105.3. So today in the studio, I have Ann Porch, the founder and owner of Basket and Bike. Uh, we're talking about being outside and exploring everything that there is to enjoy in Richmond and, and the wonderful benefits that that has uh, for us as individuals and um, opportunity to come together. So, uh, you know, the way we kind of wrap this program every time is, is to really focus more on, on Richmond and think, you know, externally to folks who are out there thinking that, you know, well, maybe... It's not worth trying, or maybe we don't have what it takes to become the healthiest city in America. So, um, one of the opportunities that I want to uh, give you is, is you know, to inject you know an idea uh, to our ideas board, uh, whether it be small or big, something that an individual could take on, or just be inspired by, um, maybe something that's already happening. Uh, I'll, I'll let you. Okay. Um, you asked me for ideas, and my trouble is I have lots of them, but oh, um, I'll try to keep, narrow down give to us a few. Yeah. give us a few. <laughs> Well, I was thinking about this. One of the, it's very doable. And I think when we begin to think that we can't attack the, the needs of our day uh, and we give up, then everyone can contribute. So one of my ideas would be, I mean, climate's obviously um, important to me. Um, a service goal. What if every January we each had some sort of like Richmond created a, an opportunity to have a service goal? What am I going to give back of my time and talents, and it could be as simple as a one hour thing, such as going down and planting a tree. There are a lot of opportunities uh, to plant a tree, and the more trees we can plant, the better and the healthier our city will be. Um, so that's one goal. Um, so if you created, and not just calling it volunteerism, um, but a service goal where we each knew that, you know, that's my dedication, I'm gonna find a way to give back, and then you. Maybe can divide that up quarterly. Like, what am I going to do? And if everybody in Richmond did that, we'd be doing really well. A lot of intentionality in that, yes. I think, moves the needle. A um, couple other things is if we just can look for the light that we all share, that's a great way to be healthy. Because we do have a choice on whether we're going to be happy or sad. We have, a, we have a choice in how we are going to react to the things that affect us. And it sometimes can be hard, but I think the more we focus on the fruits of the spirit, the kindness um, that we all really inherently have and try to share that light that we all share or recognize that we all share the same light, then I think we could find our way to a much healthier planet. Well, I think that, um, I mean, what you do for work is, is really a prime example of how that can be done. You know, it takes effort to slow down. It takes intentionality to pause, to be able to see those things. Right. Uh, and in today's world, we, we need it more than ever. And I think it helps us if we can recognize the differences that we have as strengths and not weaknesses. Um, we don't focus on the differences, but hey, aren't I glad that 
Will brings that to the table. I'm so glad Will brings that to the table because I don't. Uh, if we can highlight the differences as a positive thing, oh, I think would be great. And then this is a big one. This is really maybe for the city, but I think bike lanes without the need to be parallel to a road yeah. um, is, is, a, is a great way to help people feel like they can go places without being nervous about the traffic that might be in their way. And there are a lot of cities that are doing that. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about that because it's, it's right up your alley, but it's also something that has impacted my willingness um, to ride a bike. You know, my wife doesn't feel so safe mm -hmm. uh, riding in the city, so we don't ride as much as we used to. Um, I used to ride up from, from the most north in the city to the river, you know, on a pretty regular basis. So um, what's your vision? I mean, I, you spend a lot more time talking to people about this and, and, and what's going on. We've had folks from Plan RBA on the show. What, what do you see as the future for bike lanes in Richmond? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think we can make happen? Well, I think what we can make, we've made a lot of headway. If you look at the fall line that's coming, that's going to take you straight from Ashland all the way down to Petersburg, and it's going to connect with the Virginia Capitol Trail. And for those who don't know, which is a 51.7 mile bike, dedicated bike path that runs from Richmond to Jamestown, um, that's going to provide a lot of great, I like the artery of the fall line going straight through downtown. And we do already have, for example, people probably aren't aware of the bike lanes that exist. And as a, and I often see people on them. That's where we lead our downtown tours. We try to exclusively use bike lanes as much as we can. Um, there are some on the western end of the city. I know there are some on the south side. So the more we can continue to create these arteries that connect, um, I think more and more people will feel safe. But one of the key things that people say is they feel safer if there's a buffer. Mm -hmm. So it's important for everyone to be educated on what makes, um, where are the new parking lanes, for example, versus where are the bike lanes. But there's a great one from Monroe Park all the way to the Capitol. But if you keep following, we have bike sharrows, which are not dedicated, but you share the lane mm -hmm. with... Um, I have a firm belief it's going to continue to grow. Richmond is becoming quite a multimodal city, but it's going to take effort. It will take a lot of concentration on drivers being disincented mm -hmm. and, and being aware of their part when we are in a car of not driving distractedly. But, um, and for bikers to also know the rules and follow mm -hmm. the rules. It's, 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 we have to work together. I'm, I know I'm getting ready to travel to um, Amsterdam, to the Netherlands in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to be doing a bike lane and really studying like what is their infrastructure like and how, because how, it is a huge biking community mm -hmm. uh, there. And um, so that that's my hope. And the, also if we can learn to reduce our dependence upon the cars. Yeah. Um, and maybe find even some areas where you can have more biking and pedestrian traffic on really busy roads that where, where there's busy pedestrian. Um, and so I, I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm very optimistic about what can happen in the future if we all get behind it. We talked to Sherry Barkin, Dr. Sherry Barkin from the Children's Hospital uh, a few episodes ago, and one of the things she was talking about is the absolute need to make sure that environmental planning takes place in order to encourage people to change their behavior. So I'm a favor in favor of expanding our bike lanes. I think we need to take a lane, you know, as far as we can go east to west in the city and just close it. You know, one, one whole street, just close it to everybody, I agree, bikes right. and pedestrians. Um, and they keep talking about doing that in Carytown, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll see some action. That's there. kind of when I was, that's what I was ineffectively trying to say like a road that is pretty busy and i think around schools too mm -hmm. like I, I um i noticed there are schools where you have cars going around in a you know circle for drop off and pick up but why not make one if there is a school that is at least um has a road on all four sides you could block off one of those to to bikes because there are more and more it's wonderful to see a lot of the elementary schools there are more and more parents biking their children or children mm -hmm. biking to school. I live over in Carver and uh, GW Carver mm -hmm. Elementary would be a great school to do it because you've got blocks, you know, 
parallel right. that you can walk from. So mm -hmm. you can do drop off a block over. That's another idea. We just came up with like another one together. One. Yeah. And, and there may be parks and there may be, even if it's public or private property, that where people, we could have a bike lane that just totally doesn't run parallel to another road. And it'll give you something else to see, too. Well, with a couple of minutes we have left, yes. um, I want to give you an opportunity to make a recommendation to somebody we should be talking to and, um, and tell folks where they can find you out there online. Okay. Um, so one of the things we do that we didn't talk about um, real quick yeah. is that Basket and Bike, uh, since we started eight years ago, we've given over $15,000 uh, to environmental organizations uh, in the city, including the James River Association, VCU Rice River Center, Virginia Capital Trail Foundation, Bridge Park, and Capital Trees. And we have made a dedicated focus to really um, focus on our efforts on what Capital Trees does. The low line that we're on does run through um, part of the Capitol Trail, and then they have a new program at Hotchkiss Park, or Brooklyn Park Park, mm -hmm. you know, and they're going to have a bike lane run right through that park. It's, they're greening the city and doing amazing work. So I'd like to recommend that you have uh, the program and outreach manager from Capitol Trees uh, to come talk to you. Her name is Lisa Trapp, and um, Lisa is just doing amazing work uh, bringing people in Richmond together to work down and volunteer their time, learn about um, their programs in the city, but also volunteer their time to, I mean, yes, having gardens and um, natural spaces for people requires a lot of upkeep. We have a lot of volunteers who are going and weeding, and uh, but she has created a really incredible volunteer program. And if you like to work outside, She'd be happy to talk to you. <laughs> well, um, Lee, I know Lisa. Um, we're uh, talking with her about her website right now. Oh, so, okay, um, great. Good. We'll bring her on the show. That's great. Thank you yeah. so much. So how, pe how can people find uh, you and Basket and Bikes? So Basket and Bike, we have a website, www.basketandbike.com, spelled out. We're also on Instagram, at Basket and Bike, Facebook, and uh, reach out to, to me at Anne, A-N-N-E, at basketandbike.com. Or give us a call, 804-564-2568. Would love to have you just check out our website or come see us. Um, we have a lot of fun on the bike. And um, we're looking forward to having you out and to see what we to see a little bit more of the city. And if you ever just want to see the city by bike, give me a call. I'll take you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to take you up on that offer for sure. And I, I know my wife's already looking for a spot on the calendar. So Yeah, good. Uh, Great. Well, thank you for joining me today. This was America's Healthiest City on ESPN Richmond 106.1. Please check out americashealthiestcity.com to learn more about our program and catch us every Thursday uh, here on this program at 6 a.m. Thanks, Will. Thanks.